Hi, I'm Zoe. This is Defrag, breaking down the giants in our personal lives. Hey, Zoe. Welcome to episode number 20. Let's do something different. Rather than breaking down mindsets, I would like to put focus on something a little bit more real. I'm in for that game. I like that kind of stuff. Taco Bell no longer doing a $5 box. Chick-fil-A lines a lot shorter because of inflation. Grocery stores selling more Hot Pockets than they are steaks. I I like reality. Name the top 10 artists you don't want to see die during your living years. Holy crap, Zoe. Damn. Um... I know where this is coming from because a new Elvis movie is out and uh, I've noticed that a lot of Generation Zers as well as Millennials are going to see this movie and the truth is they really don't know who Elvis is, was, did and and they're going to see a side of Elvis that, that really is, is from the eyes of Colonel Tom Parker. It's not a pretty picture of Tom. But but I'll tell you what though to hear that Priscilla Presley supports this movie the way that she's doing it I, I totally understand what you're what, what you're wanting here and 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 that yes there are artists that I don't want to lose because it, it it's very heavy on each and every one of our hearts when we lose someone like Michael Jackson when we lose a prince when when we lose somebody of great importance and it's usually a moment that that that's shocking for for instance I'm I'm going to give you an example of that did you know. That Farrah Fawcett and Michael Jackson passed away, they transitioned on the same exact day. And a lot of people were like, she did? She didn't get the headlines. She didn't she didn't get the love that she truly deserved. And and so many of these these famous passings or transitions go and, and, and then we find out about it because we happen to stumble across it on Google. I'll make this easy. This doesn't have to be a Casey Kasem countdown. Do you know how many listeners right now are saying, Casey Kasem? Who's Casey Kasem? Casey had such a major impact on my personal life because I was there every week counting down the hits from coast to coast and around the world. And and it was such a, a huge part of my, my 43 years of radio because Casey taught me how to share the story of those that were making the music. So often we, we, we go into these, these realms of listening without understanding what the process was was in order to bring that song forward so many times i mean even members of zz top have always said you know yeah we we uh, pinned out that song in 20 minutes and yet it's taken over the past 50 years i mean that stuff blows me away but we don't understand the experiences before the lyrics hit the page or the fingers tap the bass we 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 don't know that and and that's always been my connection to music is that hey i just i just want you to know that something happened before it touched your ears all right let's break this down This is Defrag, not your biography. Okay, no particular order. The top 10 artists or the 10 artists that I don't want to see die during the rest of my living years. Elton John. I love Elton John so much. He's been a part of my life since the early part of the 1970s. He was a huge part of my radio success because he kept delivering the hits. Uh, Elton John, I've seen him in concert. We performed at that concert. It was on the outside of, of, of the arena, but but we still performed, and I feel like that I was on that ticket. But uh, this is a guy that that has always been a part of our structure in life. And, and, and here's the thing about Elton John is that when, when I was a kid and I was slowly scanning that AM dial to hear far, far away radio stations. I landed on KOMA in Oklahoma City, and they were playing Philadelphia Freedom every night, and I was like going, my God, my God, who is this performer? But yet, I knew who Elton John was long before that because of Crocodile Rock. You've always had a great connection to Darius Rucker. Oh, man, I love me some Darius Rucker. You know, there's there's a story about Darius that a lot of people don't realize, and yes, he, he would be on this list, and that is, is that I was writing and producing a show called Backstage Betty's Saturday Night Party. It was on 107.9, and, and what I wanted to do every week was to have a special guest on, on the show. And I reached out to Darius and asked him if he would be on the show that was actually hosted by a woman that was deep into her 70s. And, and Darius came into that studio and sat with me while we recorded it and wrote the lines out and everything like that. I mean, he was he was such the perfect gentleman and, and to be able to understand the vision of the show and why it is that we do. And I, I've always respected him. I was respecting him way before that, way before we even knew him because because Hootie and the Blowfish played at a place called Amos's here in Charlotte, which was basically a very small restaurant turned into a nightclub and and Hootie and the Blowfish were just all over that place and the Carolinas really really loved them and and it's just one of those connections because I think it's 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 homegrown music when you talk about moments like this you could bring up names like Michael Bolton 
You could talk about getting the opportunity to meet Rob Thomas or even sitting in the same room with Clay Aiken. I made a mistake with Clay Aiken, to which I'm very sorry that I even thought I would do that. When, when I started getting the opportunity to share conversations with, with people of fame or just people that are on their way up, um, I always wanted to have a shock question. And I think it's something that started with Richard Marks where, you know, I just, I, I, Richard's such a fun loving guy all the time. And, and I asked uh, Richard, I said, I said, are you the hunchback of Notre Dame? And he, and he, he took it and ran with it. He, he had such a great time. And I, so I thought, wow, I'm going to do that with all, all of the people that I talk with. And, and it really, no. No, and because I asked, I uh, now listen. I want. I'm, I'm going to break it down with Clay Aiken. Okay, what happened was is that Clay Aiken w- was from Charlotte. He was a normal man teaching at a school for mentally challenged students, and and so a normal man, a normal background. And Clay Aiken had taken over America because of American Idol. And, and I just wanted to know, it, being, being a normal man, a common man, just like Elvis Presley was, I simply asked, are you the reincarnation of Elvis Presley? And, and he got upset. And, and, and it, it, I shouldn't have done that. I, I had the opportunity to interview him, and I've always waited for another chance. And I, I, I hope, I hope, maybe one day. And so I would have to say that Clay is on this list too, because I, I really would like to sit down and have an honest-to-God conversation without smart-ass radio disc jockey talk. How does it make you feel talking about the singer-songwriters that have touched your life? I wish more people would do it. Because there is a reason why you like Leonard Skinner, Led Zeppelin, The Beatles. It's not because the radio stations kept playing those songs over and over again. Something about them got into the veins of your soul and brought their music forward because people could see that you really enjoyed it. You know, sitting down with with someone like Pat Boone. I've been with Pat three times. And to hear his real, honest-to-God passion for music and how things happen before, during, how it's continuing to happen and things like that, yeah, it it gets inside you. And and I just wish people would say, well, you know, instead of liking Justin Bieber just because it's Justin Bieber because he's cute and all that kind of stuff, why not tell me why you really, really are touched by Justin Bieber or even Miley Cyrus? Are they on this list of the 10 people that you don't want to see die during your living years? Listen, listen, listen. This is a list. You, you asked a simple question about the, about the 10 artists that I don't want to see die during my time. I mean, we, we've endured so many losses over the past 10, 15, 20 years. And when you've got someone like Justin Bieber, I'm telling you, this, this is the cold, hard truth. I feared for Justin Bieber in 2021. I literally, literally talked about it a lot. And I feared for him. The reason why is because he was 27 years old in 2021. You know the story of 27 years old, the number of famous people who lost their lives when they were 27. And so to see that he is 28 now, I, I swear to you, I swear to you, it's like, thank God in heaven. Thank God he got past that mile marker. And, and so, so even Miley Cyrus, I love her to pieces. She's a major part of, of our music front. But I mean, I could, could sit here and tell you stories about all of these people. And, and I, I, what I don't want to do is I don't want to buzz kill anybody. On this list, of course, Paul McCartney. I love me some Paul McCartney. I, I have been with so many members of Paul McCartney's band. And, and it's just it's just fun to hear the stories of those around these people of fame and how the, their energy is generated because they're in touch with someone like Paul McCartney. And, and then to hear their stories of how their lives changed because they learned new tricks of the trade. Um, um, the other people include, you know, Steven Tyler of Aerosmith, Ace Frehley. Uh, Joe Elliott of Def Leppard. He's always been one of my favorite people to talk to. Hello, hello. It's Joe Elliott. And, and he just, I, just, I just love having conversations with him because he's such a passionate person about music. He takes chances. He, he's not afraid of stepping outside of what we know him for. Lindsey Buckingham. My, my biggest mistake in life was I didn't discover Lindsey Buckingham until, until the pandemic. Because, I mean, I, Fleetwood Mac is one of the biggest, biggest success stories in my heart. But to break down the band and listen to each member and what they bring to the band really was an eye-opening experience. And and to this day, anytime that I've got open, I will sit there and listen to Lindsey Buckingham's music because of the way that he works his words and, more importantly, the way that he works his fingers. Defrag. Breaking down your giants. Most people don't feel safe talking about their personal experiences. I get it. 
I've, I've walked in those shoes. I remember I've been, I've been a daily writer since 1994. I didn't make anything that I put on paper public to anyone until maybe seven or eight years into into the project. I mean, I mean, even today, I've got poetry that no other set of eyes have have even looked at. But but I still have it. Maybe one day. Maybe one day. But the the, the reason why I really like last night at, at midnight. This is when this idea came to me to to do a defrag episode based on something that, that we can all relate with the artists that you don't want to see lose their life during your life and and it, it, it just it starts the conversation with yourself and then to break it down to the point of why has this artist made such an impact on your life and then you start comparing it to other artists that are in your life and it, it hopefully it'll lead you to discovering newer artists and things like that because you know the, the, they all say that classic rock was a moment in music history and yet there are a lot of rock bands out there right now that are just as good if not better and 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 why aren't we discovering them well they say that we are but it but it's through soundcloud itunes but if you do, if you've never heard of the band then how do you expect to find the band and and that's that's what this was about it, it it's about who inspired you and why not take a step to find someone new that you can add to your list of favorites, add to your list of, you know, things that you go to to break free of, of, of this reckless world that it has become. So defrag. It doesn't have to be about, oh, poor, poor, pitiful me. I'm having a real crap day today. No. Take a positive subject. Why do red birds make you smile? Give me a top five list.